nails never fit. I'm an island boy, I put my Box cover, this is Tati Ver and welcome to another top 10 social media accounts down. Now we have so many topics to talk about, I don't even know where to start because when you see the bangarang and the piece of excitement that has been <laughs> taking place on social media now, I want to talk, to talk about it. I'm very eager to talk about it. I'm sure you want to hear what my thoughts are. So let's get right into it. <laughs> The dusty or the berry yeah, the juicy or the scoop All the things are going on and missing on the news Tell your sister and your auntie said the corner coming soon All the drama where you want you for tuning to the youth Like yo, hey, The box cover I'm cover all the topics like a evening pot cover Mix up, blender, all them suck me out What happened now the week, yo, just tune in, zine Number 10, Fry Irish Quits Get up. Why did I say get up? Anyway, so veteran social media, local social media personality slash YouTuber Fry Irish recently announced on his YouTube channel that he is quitting comedy. And I mean, I don't even know what to say about it, but just hear what he had to say. Comedy for me, it finished. Um, I'm retire, I'm gonna quit, whatever I want to call it. It is finished. I'm going to explain to you why I say that. For all that, you know, might know, know um, say recently, I give my um, life to the Lord. Someone you might not know because you know, you know watch me that often. So this video, somebody might have shared it because they, they, they see what I go on. So, recently I shared some video and I have me teaching. One of the days when I read, I came across Ephesians 5 verse 3 to 4. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be one's name among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting. Now, what is jesting? Jesting definition is said or done for amusement joking you understand and what i have been doing all this while is joking now a lot of you will say you yeah, read the bible wrong you mean um high gesturing like um you know say certain things we're not supposed to say like slack words and you know, foolish talking and you see, understand run joke with both god and everything there the other version of the bible them will tell us something else but king james says no jesting joking around you understand and Someone will come at me with that, but I'm going to just, just left it right there so because I'm not going to open my teeth. Okay, um, so he's basically saying that he has um, given his life to Christ and he no longer wants to be putting out comedic videos because it somehow has spirits of demons in it. And um, I'm, I'm very surprised because Fry Irish is probably one of the very successful ones um, in Jamaica, he has over 500,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. I think he has several YouTube channels. I think he has a vlog one, um, one with a comedy and, and, and something else. So he was doing pretty well on the site. And so I'm very, um, I, I, I'm lost for words. Like, why would he take this stance? But we have to just respect his decision. If he feels that that is what God wants him to do at this point in time, then, you know, all the best, brother. But it isn't something that is very uncommon i find that oftentimes there are some youtubers who lose themselves to this space it, it no no it just happens and they're never quite the same after that moment some people it's you know they, they might go to religion some people it's the drugs some people it's they just come up with a whole different way of life and so fry irish i feel is just going through his thing right now um i just hope that he's able to still sustain himself and take care of his family but my readers i'd love to hear from you what do you think about this were you shocked when you heard the news, sound off below. Number nine, Queenie mourns. Me dove cut. All right, so this is not really a, a light-hearted conversation that I'm about to have. But you know, Queenie, a.k.a. Lady Gangsta, the double top empress, she recently shared a video on her social media um, of her, you know, during her child's funeral. Now, she has a daughter by the name of Rochelle, and Rochelle passed away recently. 
and Queenie has been posting daily, um, showing us the day-to-day, -day, what you call it, like how she's dealing with this loss. And it seems as if things really, you know, gripped her at the gravesite. And this is what happened. Oh God! Sandra Gano. Come now, Queenie. Come now, Queenie. Take her up. Take her up. Take her up. Come them last minute with them. Stop. Thank you. The man still has She have a last arm. I mean, honestly, when I saw it, I was just like, whoa. I mean, if you're a fan of Queenie, you know Queen is dramatic. She's going to express herself because that is how she's able to heal and to just cope with different things that happen in her life. And so Queenie throwing herself down and wanting to go into the earth with her with her daughter, you know, it just kind of showed the bond that she has with her child and how much she is really grieving at this moment. So I'm just hoping that all of the bangarang we are going with Queenie and her man and the baby, baby mother and all of these things, you can kind of put that to rest and for her to get some time to really deal with the loss of her daughter, Rochelle. So, Beridos, let me just, you know, ask you to say something encouraging that you think could really help Queenie in this moment. Go up on our social media and give her a kind word. All right? Mm -hmm. Number eight, Mummy Tune. All right, so I saw this video on TikTok. And it, 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 in this video, you had a young man there and it seemed like he lived on the street side and he was dedicating a song that he composed for his mother. He was dedicating it to his mom. Oh my god! <laughs> no, honestly, this is a very much hashtag uh, moment. That brother, you can tell, say him really and truly cherishes his mom. You see, say him put all them, um, we call it like all them vigor and everything into that song. And mommy, she was very much overcome with her emotions and she embraced him at the end. And you know, it's just a really lovely moment. In the midst of all of the drama and the, the, the one bag of excitement that has been taking place in social media, it is nice to see moments like this. You know, I kind of find it comforting that amidst the noise, we can, you know, really, you know, cherish these family moments. So, Beridas, have you ever... No, I should have said Beridas, because Beridas would have been plural. So, yeah, it just kind of work with me. But Beridas, have you ever done something like this for your mother? You ever write a song for your mother or a poem or something like this? I'm trying to think about it. I've... Have I? I've... My mother wanted a mug, I think from Azan some years ago, I did say like Happy Mother's Day. I mean, if I really want to give her because she beat me the day before, somebody, I eventually gave her the mug. So, yeah, let, let me know, Burritos, what's the kindest thing that you've done for your mom? So, enough below. <laughs> Number seven, Aishana Kalab. My word, my sentence. So the equal rights singer Aishana uh, recently posted a message to her social media announcing that she is indeed um, going to have a collaboration with the Shape of You singer Ed Sheeran. Now, this is what she said. So she said that if someone told me four years ago that I would get clearance from Ed Sheeran and his team, I would have said no way. 
If someone had told me that four years later, Equal Rights would be re-released on the official Shape of You instrumental, I would have said, no way. If someone had told me four years ago that I would have a song with Ed Sheeran, I would say, no way. At Teddy Photos, you are a big part of my journey. There would be no Equal Rights without Shape of You. Everything that has happened over the past four years has led us to this moment and i'm so happy that we're able to experience this together to my loyal fans i love you i can't thank y'all enough for your continued support we just got started i just got started what you think one round can do i'm not gonna lie but aishana this is a big deal no i do not know the nature of the collaboration if it is going to be an aishana single I would kind of prefer that it is an Ed Sheeran single because, you know, that is really like a big deal if I am really kind of have the song and put you on it and then him with a massive team and promotion can really lift your career like that. That would have put you right in at the ranks with Shensia and her Kanye West moment right now because at this moment, Ed Sheeran is in the top five on the Billboard 1 Hot 100 charts. And so that would really be a good look for you, Aishana. Now, Ed Sheeran has also been talking about it in many interviews, how fun he is of Jamaican music and how he is very much excited to be working with Aishana. This is what he had to say some time ago. So, so, she, so I just DM'd her because she said in the th post that the song, uh, she didn't go to my label because she knew it wouldn't get cleared. And I, so I just DM'd her being like, hey, if you want that cleared, like we can clear that t tomorrow. And then, so we were sort of chatting and she sent me another one of her songs. And I was like, man, that's fucking great. So I just sent her an idea on guitar. And then that day she sent me an idea back and then I was like, oh fuck, cool. So then I recorded a little bit and sent it back. And within like five days, we, we had this tune. I'm recording my bits properly today and I'm gonna figure out a way when to put it out, but it's good. Do you, does your label um, get annoyed with you? When, the, when it makes sense, you know, that, that I literally, I heard uh, Shauna's uh, song when I was in the Caribbean and then I spoke about it four years later on a radio show and then we get in touch and then we make a song and then we put it out. That's a story. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen. It, it, there is, it's not like a, a record company board meeting thing. Right, right, right. And I think those moments, much like, you know, the tea on thing happened really naturally. All right, so I'm very much here for it. I can't wait to see this um, this song. I want to see a music video too. Because, and I hope that the song kind of nasty. Like, we don't want the song being like, oh, you know, we are, we are March for Jamaica independence. No, I want something where and along the lines of, you know, a little, you know, a little bump to your forehead, a little, you know, a little Pepsi. You know, I want to see I to kind of draw out Ed Sheeran a little bit because it looked like say, he's very much um, into the carelessness as well. So, Marinos, let me know what do you think you, this song should be titled. Comment down below. <laughs> Number six, Auntie Donna signs. Me Plankaterian. All right, so social media influencer, um, philanthropist. The charitable lady, the charitable one, Auntie Donna recently shared on her page that she is now being managed by Ramesh Entertainment. Yes, Auntie Donna is part of the Ramesh brand right about now. And many people on social media were just like, what? They did not see this coming at all because what many of us have known, you know, Ramesh to do, um, he has, you know, managed dancehall artists, a couple of selectors and some dancers. So people are wondering how the box foot. Auntie Donna fit in at the middle of all of this. What am I going to do? Like help her out, manage our charity page? I don't know. But I have to add that Auntie Donna has quite a growing band, um, brand. And she has, you know, I think over 500,000 followers on Facebook. I guess when Auntie Donna go live, I've seen her lives where Auntie Donna go live like all 2 o'clock in the morning. And there are 10,000 people online listening and hanging on to her every word. And if you know Ramesh, you know, Ramesh I go where the money is because it's the vision. And so I'm very much... Um, you know, into you know, eager to see where he will put Auntie Donna's brand. Ask your planka people. When I say, when I say Auntie Donna, uh, every day. Big management now. <laughs> what do you know about this? <laughs> eh? Woo! Money, money, money! I'm going to tell the people I'm holding for surprises for now. All of them are starting in December. So no fun at all, but. When you have a book on Tidana Fauna, so you know. <laughs> when you have a great heart and God bless you, everything is possible. Wow. Share the life, guys. Share the life. Oh, Tidana, be sweet, and <laughs> Share the life. Share the life. Share the life. Tidana, be on diet now. Yeah. So the whole of my staff, them. Don't worry, my staff. I can't take food. Lord Jesus. Um, sell me two dozen cake there. <laughs> I'm going to smile on them, though. I'm going to have big one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lord Jesus. 
so far she has been working with JPS and she's brand ambassador for Miss Birdie Crackers right now and we saw her some time ago acting in a play with um, Audrey Reed. So it seems as if there are people willing to work with Auntie Donna and so we just have, just have to see what will happen when Ramesh puts his touch on her. I would kind of love to see an Auntie Donna and a Shensia collaboration just for the culture one time. I do not know. You know, like, you know, like a nice song about giving back. I think Auntie Donna like maybe can do the intro. Shensia come in. It could be a really good vibe. So burritos, let me know if you think it makes sense. You think a Shensia slash um, uh, Auntie Donna collab would be kind of festive for the Christmas? Sound off below. <laughs> Number five, Leela IK. I word my sentence. All right, so where do I start with this tour? So, reggae singer Leela IK, you know her for her hits such as Second Chance, um, Forget Me, when, when, when I Look at Where I'm Coming From, you know, them big monster tracks there. Yes, so that particular reggae artist, Leela IK, recently. Um, had many people online in quite a frenzy when she posted and shared some images that suggested that she was in danger. No, she went on her Instagram page and she went live and many users could just hear her saying that she felt unsafe. Now that has that video has been deleted. Then she went on Twitter and she started posting a series of bizarre tweets. And so the tweets read, Mama, your son wanted. Men have done nothing but break me and mom and my granddaughter expose all you want so what if i'm into women my music isn't real and so right there and then you know i was just like what is this is this some sort of prank was she hacked is this some sort of message that she's hoping that people online can connect the dots but like it was just too bizarre to make any sense later on she went live again now and you know she was posting at this you know random location i guess in trelawney and so everyone was just like no man something is really happening to leela ik and so what we can really kind of break down is that someone i guess was trying to blackmail her you know by probably sharing some image that she with which with her and another like a, a female and leela decided to get on top of that story get in front of that story and to just share her two cents before the person tried to blackmail her this is crazy luckily um i saw a post from zj sparks and it suggested that leela is doing well and that she's safe at this time but it also touched on the fact that she has her own mental health challenges and it's a conversation that i've been wanting to have and i try to have on the countdown every look now and then because i really feel that a lot of the artists and the entertainers are going through it in this pandemic because the thing that often provides their healing has been taken away from them because they're not able to perform and to travel in the ways that would allow them to feel normal and most like themselves and so when you have removed that they do a lot of introspection and they have to confront a lot of the challenges and the struggles that sometimes the music and their art can distract them from. And so I really hope that Leela IK is, you know, has a good team of people around her that can give her the support. Luckily, I don't think the comments have been too nasty. People seem to be very supportive of her, you know, talking and sharing her truth. And so salute to, 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 to Leela IK and hopefully you'll be well this time, you know, next year. All right, Burrito, so some time ago, I showed you guys, you know, my journey going to Rapid True Value to get a new lock because I tell you, one like a situation going where people did a try for, you know, invade my space. So I had to beef up security. No, I was sent to Rapid True Value and I got recommended the Toledo locks, like uh, some options. And I selected one that I felt, you know, was the better one and the best fit for me. Yeah, so from these options, I selected the electronic dead bolt lock. Now, I got it installed and I have been, you know, I've been enjoying it ever since. Now, one of the features that I particularly like is the fact that it is pry resistant and the anti-bumping features. You know, sometimes when you look at skumujin teeth, them can easily take them like a knife and kind of pry things open and gain access to um, your, your valuables and your premises. This prevents it. And what I also like is that I'm able to put in my own you know, like password, because you know, people stop doing a little something, I you know, in modern times now. So I can put in my own um, custom password. And in the event that I am probably like out of town and my mom, my mother, or somebody to visit and clean, they can have their own password um, as well to gain access. And I can remove it when um, that job is, is, is complete. 
So remember, the anti-picking, the anti-bumping, and the pry resistant features. And also, you know, if you want something a little bit more sleek and stylish, then the deadlock will be, you know, the perfect fit for you. And yes, burritos, so if you want for beef up security at your home, at your business, wherever, then may I recommend that you go and get a Toledo lock. Because trust me, like, so this dead deadlock, like, up till now, it doesn't hit me, it not hit me yet that I am kind of in a little modern times now because a part of me still want to use key and open this idea that I now have to kind of put in password and things just open for me it's still weird but I'm getting used to it <laughs> so please go out and jump into the modern times and get yourself a Toledo lock for more information you can check them out right here at their website as well as their social media to find out wh where you can access one of these locks for yourself anyway back to the countdown number four island boy <laughs> All right, Marie does know. I saw this video on TikTok and it, 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 it featured two Caucasian boys in a pool singing a song, I guess, titled Island Boy. Take a look. I'm an island boy. I put my vest on, yeah. Like a wagwan man trying to make it to the top. I'm an island boy. I've been trying to make <laughs> No, honestly, I mean, I hope they're not, they're not actually official artists, but if they are, I mean, maybe there's room for their music in the entertainment space. They seem to have an interesting image. If you remember, you remember, um, you watch Rugrats, right? You remember, what's her name again? Angelica. You remember Angelica's doll. What's the name again? A Cynthia? That is exactly what the two of them look like with them here, them set like it, part of like the compass. A compass? I don't know, my brain kind of slow today, but just working me burritos. By the way, if you're watching the premiere right now, please just hit the thumbs up. Because I know sometimes I'm very stingy. We'll give him a little thumbs up as well as to leave a comment in the chat um, as well as under the video when it's done. All right? And thanks for watching the ad so far. All right. Well, anyway, back into this. So, burritos, this video went so viral to the point that even our own local influencers chimed in to do a spoof of it, such as Dino Crazy and Valdemore. <laughs> I, the time to make it. I want to put the in the sun and they didn't know hey, I'm a just island boy who's trying to make it and you keep a guan and you're staring at the sun I'm a just island boy from the Caribbean and when they say I sing the other bang hey, I'm a just island, island boy island boy yeah <laughs> All right, Maritas. All right, let me know what you think of this Island Boy single. Sound off below. Number three, Delivery Guy. Me bike bike. No, honestly, me need to stop them something because it look like some just kind of out of my creativity. Me go try the better with number two and number one. Anyway, all right, so Maritas. So this video has been going viral recently, and it shows a Delivery Guy uh, freestyling a song on the Crocodile Teeth rhythm, and it basically details his delivery courier lifestyle. Take a listen. A little money by a young king, and he told me that guy from Burger King, Lico Caesars, go straight up a pies. I'm delivering guy. Well, pick up a big one first for your reach for the purse. Complete your order, come for me, drink, have a quench for your thirst. Online rate and merch at your feet as you speak. Kill, take a bus from Rap 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 yeah, take a little money by a young king, but it won't be a guy. I feel blind. From Burger King, the Caesars, go straight up a pie. I'm the delivery guy. Girls call me Mr. Delivery. Girls that picture me was one big pandy by like a figure. Can I have a wow? <laughs> All right, Maritas. So I enjoyed the song. I like the song. This kind of reminds me how we did, we did, we did come across the guy that would do the fishing wing wing wing. I remember him? You know, and so I hope that this puts him in places where he can get interviews because, you know, I feel like the youth them need opportunities where their talents can shine. So if a while I do him look at 95, him can, you know, promote himself as an artist 
you know, all the, all the best for him is an extra income for him. So, Beridos, um, would you actually listen to this if I'm going to the studio and write like the full um, professional version of this delivery guy song? Are you here for it? Sound off below. Number two, filter daddy, my Snapchat toenail. <laughs> no, honestly, like really, that was the best I could come up with. <laughs> All right, all right, so this video now had me laughing for minutes. Now, this shows a, a older gentleman, an elderly guy, being introduced to Snapchat by his bridging. No, the bridging never tell him that Snapchat come with all kind of filters that will make him think that he's a different person. <laughs> Take a look at how it went. Wait, what? What, what, what? The Audi. Are you? Are you? <laughs> Oh, I feel good. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not weak by me. I'm not weird about Captain. It's a makeup thing when I come to me with man. This is not about me. What are you? you? The man who can't feel me, yes. What are you? I'm gonna have this. I'm this. Look, look, I'm this. Look, look, see there? I'm me done. So you done? That means you. See somebody on us like a moose moose. I'm me. I'm me done. So are you done? Uh, so I don't know they can read the pictures of them. No, I phone. I, 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 I see my, I see my look. <laughs> No, I don't even know where I need to start with this, but this brother never seen nothing like that in his entire life. And all the people around him on a wrong for that. The poor brother like actually was in disbelief because he couldn't real he couldn't understand or comprehend that it was himself and they just had Snapchat features on his body. Like no, they, they were wrong for that. And they did they did they did they didn't did do it just once, you know. They did it again. Hey, all right. How are you? <laughs> no, <you mind? laughs> Got middle baby, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Come here, <laughs> All right, no burritos. Have you ever done something messy like this with some of your older family members that might not be so technologically, you know, savvy and up to date? You ever try, you know, mess around with some little, you know, some little editing things so kind of trick them? I'd love to hear your stories. Sound off in the comment section. Cool it with piece of ice. Scan them, you don't know a spice, and you're watching the Dutty Berry Show. Keep it locked. Spice it up. And number one goes to Spice Pride. Woo! 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 My word, my sentence, my paragraph, my essay, my bibliotheca. Number one this week goes to Spice. <laughs> At the um, where do I even go? There's so much to unpack with this story. So, people, so Spice posted on her page that she would actually be headlining the Toronto Pride Festival. Did you see her? No, stop. So she posted this picture with the caption Toronto, Canada, finally gonna see you 2022. I can't wait, LGBTQ. Let well, me feel like I rhyme. Should I rhyme right? It's like I want for a share, right? <laughs> So anyhow, Burritos, Spice posted that picture to her Instagram page and I don't think she anticipated the reactions that would have, you know, appeared out of thin air from the dancehall community. Now, several persons did offer up support, such as Jada Kingdom and um, I think Spice's editor, Oliver Twix. Um, he said, you know, something to the effect of, you know, if Spice needs somebody to perform, a gear up to perform at that event, that he is more than willing to participate. And Jada Kingdom, you know, so she recently, you know, announced that she is um, a lesbian. So she's also offering up her support for this event as well. But... You know so this is Jamaica, you know so this is dancehall, so in no way, shape or form that this could have just been where the story ends. This is exactly what I was afraid of. You had to, to you, I forgot of the, the, the villains them in the story now, that will just pop up out of whichever ditch that they were to go and make their voices known. One such being The Foot. So, The Foot took to social media in his usual factor, um, with his usual style, because, you know, I guess he has a post notification that is just set up whenever there are issues that have to do with the rainbow community 
he is always there front and center like the biggest cheerleader in the world. So this is what the foot had to say. In all my 20 plus years as an established product of Jamaica and dancehall and reggae music, this is the first time I feel completely defeated, ashamed, embarrassed, weak, betrayed in my subconscious mind. I was confident that two people I would never live to see do this was Spice Official and Grown Godzilla. This now drives a serious fear in my consciousness that all hope is lost in the submission to the devil has become the new thing for dancehall artists, the new norm for our culture. Based on what I see going that is moral values are no longer important. The only thing that matters is money. The preservation of our music, culture and righteous values don't count. Honestly, and the name of the Almighty, I was banking on hope that no matter what Spice Official would never give in to something like this. But I guess I was dead wrong. This is a big L for the ancestors of Jamaica and the music given to us by the Almighty. Money has officially poisoned and crippled our industry. We'll maybe, well, we'll maybe, oh God, bad punctuation, right? Yes, so, well, maybe this is a band, a band show if not it would be sad that spice official wouldn't consider the well-being and career of her dj after this shame or kill me god no really yeah oh i feel so bad for you are you okay all right so that is basically what the foot said and not to be outdone we had rizla with his sentiments as well we are not sell out we are hungry jamaica full of good food and very nice people our african heritage culture are, is rich Jamaican artists already knew that our indigenous music bashes against homosexuals and lesbianism. We Jamaicans bash against anything that is corrupt and misleading to our nation of people. Do not mix reggae and dancehall with your evil nasty ways. No to guns, no to gays, no to lesbian, no to pedophilia, no to all what's wrong and going against our culture. And so, wow, that was quite a lot. So that is what the Foot and Rizla had to say about Spice headlining the Toronto Pride Festival this year. Now, I, I do believe in the right of different individuals to really talk up and to speak on issues that are important to them. And so these individuals have to be commended for at least, you know, using their voice to, you know, talk to their platform. Now, Spice is doing something that I guess is quite unconventional and goes against the grain or that people, you know, have come to know dancehall. Now, I am someone who I definitely disagree with the idea that, you know, that, that, that being homophobic is a part of the culture that should be kept and celebrated. There are many things that are a part of our culture that um, is problematic but I find that many Jamaicans is very easy to embrace Ooh. and so this entire thing where it is cool to be homophobic in Jamaica is something that moving forward needs to not happen but I realize that there are many people who do not want this change and that is understandable the same how the republicans over there don't like the whole diversity and so that you have all kind of different races about the place it is the same way you get me that people do not like change i mean often say to myself now you see this country called jamaica as um open and liberal as it might appear we are very much a very conservative place when um it hits the fan and this entire idea where um people are looking at spice that she is selling out and she's just doing this for money it is something that I find a lot of persons feel as if if you are gay and if you think that gay people should not die, then it means that you're pocketing or making money because you're doing what the people or the system want you to be. Suppose you're just a good person who respect people who live differently from you do. That could just be it. But I think in the dancehall culture, it has been communicated to many people that the only reason that people choose to be gay is for profit. And I think that messaging has been um, promoted in the communities and so it's the reason why there are many dancehall artists as soon as them bus and them bus and people start seeing them climb the social ladder that people in those communities start to say i sleep them asleep with that producer and i do them do little things there which is why they have number one song because that has been the way how a lot of people in the society have come to be introduced by you know to, 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 to homosexuals and that messaging is always just messy and it is it is untrue but you can't wrong the foot for thinking how he thinks because he's shown this time and time again and so people just live your life 
People over here say if you want to be ignorant and homophobic, you have a right to do so. But just understand that the world is changing and that you're going to just keep on echoing these type of ignorant thoughts over and over again until you finally accept that it is out of your control. No spice. But the other hand, no, no, next year you're going to be at the festival. And I'm also thinking that Spice, you're not a stupid woman. You're very smart as well. And you are probably taping for this show um, Love and Hip Hop atlanta now the last time her um spice focus on the messaging about colorism and black hypocrisy and i feel like this will be a central theme because you understand how jamaican people are very predictable me i bet you any money that this will also be a storyline that she did something that went against the grain and there was a whole uproar in other country and all of the ignorance and she's going to probably talk about why it is important for her to, to, to show care and compassion to the LGBTQ community. Just one suggestion, Spice. <laughs> when you perform next year, do not go sing the first part of Ramping Shot because, yeah, the people that make it care. A the teacher. And a spy. Yes, the man grab a girl. Oi, my belly. Laugh enough if you laugh or cry. What the funny? <laughs> All right. But well, anyway, readers, let me know what you thought about this entire saga with Spice Premier um, performing at the Tor Toronto Pride Festival next year. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it, you know, people. I hope that you've enjoyed this social media top 10 countdown. Oh, God, that was a lot that I had to say just now. And um, if you did, please hit the thumbs up button as well as to turn on your post notification. Do not forget to leave a comment and let me know what was your favorite part of the social media countdown as well as to share. So, you know, we can head to the 300,000 subscriber mark. Now, once you've done that, if you want to follow me on my social media, it is at Dutty Bear Show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, all over. And if you want to advertise within the social media countdown, then shoot me an email to bookings.duttyberryshow at gmail.com. Take care until next time. <laughs> the dusty yeah, the berry, yeah, the juicy yeah, the scoop. All the things are going on, they're missing on the news. Tell your sister and your auntie said the corner coming soon. All the drama where you want, you fit tuning to the youth. Like, yo, hey, box cover, and cover all the topics like an evening. Pot cover, mix up, blender, all them. Suck me, I will have me not a week, yo, just tune in. Zine.